Hey everyone, welcome to a special Copper Up update. Today we have Sylvain Abel from 1844 who knows the sector, he knows the metal, but also he can give us a little bit of insight because yesterday CNBC came out with something called the Copper Squeeze. Sylvain, can you explain that? Yeah, uh, actually a Copper Squeeze is not your, uh, your copper pipe in the house that are squeezing. It's not winter, right? Uh, no, it's not winter, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the copper squeeze is pretty simple. It's the, uh, the lack of reserves. Uh, the reserves are depleting pretty fast in the, uh, in the copper sector. And uh, the lack of discovery in the last, uh, I would say, 11 years. Uh, as, uh, as an explorer, I can tell that uh, in 2012, uh, the uh, price of copper started uh, depleting and going down. And uh, the sector uh, got a... I would say, uh, wasn't funded properly. The exploration wasn't founded because there was no money in the street to uh, when we were talking about uh, copper de uh, development or copper exploration. So uh, what happened is that the uh, price of copper went, uh, went down uh, below uh, $2. Ouch. And a lot of the mines that were in production uh, started mining their rich zone. So they, uh, they end up in uh, 2022 uh, having uh, low grades uh, in, uh, in their mines and, uh, yeah, a price of copper that is interesting, but uh, definitely a, a mine or mines uh, across the world that are definitely depleting. So uh, if I go back in, in history, uh, in 2013, when we were going to conferences and talking about copper, a lot of the uh, segments that we were talking about was the depletion of the reserves. In 2013, the prediction was by 2021, uh, the, uh, the grades in copper will be down to 0.61%. Uh, and uh, actually, we hit 0.61%, I think, back in 2018. And, wow. uh, and now we're probably uh, in an average, uh, the average mines are probably around 0 0.30, 0 0.31. But they're still viable uh, at 0.31 with uh, with a three dollar twenty five uh, copper price per pound, right? Per pound uh, in US, uh, we're still we're uh, those mines are still in good position. But even if they're producing and making money, the depletion of the mine is still going on. Don't we uh, need copper? Definitely, we need copper in uh, every aspect of life. Uh, we all love our iPhones, uh, Samsung. We all love our, our pads. We all love our, uh, our tablets. Um, we need copper to be able to uh, connect everything and operate everything. It goes as far as uh, your, even the connection going to the wall. Uh, you need that copper within the uh, little rubber band that you see. So yeah, there, there's, there's copper in, in that sector. There's copper in, uh, in, uh, in vehicles. Uh, copper uh, is everywhere in your house. Uh, even when people are telling me, yeah, yeah, but uh, they're replacing the pipes with uh, with a nylon tube now. Yeah, but uh, I don't think they're replacing the wiring in your house with the, the nylon with tubes. The nylon tubes. So um, definitely, uh, probably the part of the plumbing is a very small portion. Um, the other thing too is uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, we're going towards the electrification. Uh, yeah, a lot I'm just of going to touch about yeah, that. Governments are signed uh, agreements together that uh, by 2035, the um, the uh, vehicle floats will be uh, mostly electric. Uh, if you look at an electric uh, car versus a conventional petroleum car, uh, we're looking at 35 pounds of copper in a regular standard car that we drive every day. Uh, if we transfer tomorrow morning to an electric car, uh, same type of vehicle, let's say we take the same size, same same thing, uh, we're looking at 130 to 150 pounds. Yeah, it's so almost five times. It's almost five times. And that's not only considering the electric cars, even if... Uh, uh, we would change all the electric cars tomorrow morning. There's not enough copper in the world right now to be able to accommodate all the electric cars within the next 15 years. Um, but on the other side, is uh, it's all the infrastructure that will be needed to, you know, 
uh, keep those cars going. Uh, we're looking at solar panels, we're looking at uh, windmills, uh, the farms are going to go up on those two uh, items, and then uh, all the the balance you need you need uh, you need some uh, some connectors you need some you know to to be able to connect your car all, along the road. I can't imagine if uh, if they don't think of the infrastructure driving down from Montreal to Toronto, uh, you're going to have to. Yeah, they're plug gonna, your car somewhere. They're gonna have to wire that. Of course, yeah. the whole wiring grid for electrical ve- for the for the vehicles to travel on the road. That's, and, a, that's and, a lot of copper. And what people don't realize is that right now, if you uh, let's say you stop in a gas station, there might be one or two pods to be able to uh, wire, uh, boost your car. But that's because there's probably one car at out of every twenty cars right now that is electric. But by 2035, if there's 15 cars out of 20 cars, all of a sudden, if we all stop, if we're all going to Toronto, we're going to have to stop somewhere, and we can't function on two pods. So that means they're going to have to build a lot more. I was listening to Mr. McEwen. Yeah, of uh, McEwen Mining. Yeah, of McEwen Mining, and he was saying um, that he considers that price of copper will probably double within the next 12 to 18 months. Wow, that's quick. Uh, he's not the only one saying that. Pierre Lassonde, who founded Newmont uh, back in, the, I would say, about a month and a half, two months ago, in the papers here in Quebec, he announced that the uh, price of copper will double. So, and even me, by experience, I'm looking at what's going on, the reserves and everything, and yes, probably pr- price of copper is going to double. I'm in the Gaspé region. Uh, for the last 10 years, a lot of people thought I was totally crazy. Uh, they didn't understand too much why I was still, you know, uh, the only guy working or the only company, because I'm not by myself, but the only company working in uh, in the Gaspé region. I uh, have to understand that the Gaspé region owes the largest copper mine in North America for 45 years. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Lo and behold. <laughs> yeah. So the largest uh, copper mine uh, that produced 141 million tons at uh, 0.85% copper, if my memory is good. But they closed down in 99. We have the opportunity right now of having a, a company that took over uh, from Quebec with uh, the head office in Quebec, and uh, it's called a Cisco Metal. So, Do these guys know what they're talking about? Definitely. Uh, if I, uh, a Cisco Metal, if I, you know, the chairman, uh, Bob Ware's a, a lot of knowledge. He was actually the guy behind uh, a Cisco in Canadian Malartic. Uh, he was the guy who think was the thinking behind the low low grades, high tonnage mine uh, for a long time. Bob, uh, people thought he was uh, totally crazy, and actually, it's probably one of the uh, you know uh, producing mine in uh, in uh, in the Val d'Or region that is bringing so much money. He had the same idea in base metal, so he acquired a project in Northwest Territory. It's a zinc project, it's a huge project. It's a, it's really interesting because it's probably one of the purest zinc in Canada. And uh, he's, he just came out with his PEA. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great place. So then when price of copper hit 325, uh, negotiation started with Glencore, and they acquired the the mine. I think they're in the last process of uh, fi- uh, finalizing the deal, but uh, we're looking at a, a mine that will be put back in production with 456 million tons. Right near where you are, too. Uh, right beside our property. Uh, give you an idea, we have two projects in the copper sector. One is called uh, Solipec East on the Vortex project. That's 23 kilometers west, uh, same horizon, same uh, same type of rock, the same thing. We're working on the permits right now. Uh, we uh, we have some negotiations to do during the winter with uh, with the natives, with uh, the population, but we want to make sure that everybody is on board and they all understand what we want to do. And then uh, we have the other project, Native Copper, which we uh, we acquired through uh, claiming and uh, through prospectors uh, in the last uh, three years now. Uh, that project is, uh, is totally different. It's a stratiform system. Uh, it's, it's, and, and it's huge. It's 28 kilometers long by eight kilometers wide. So this year we did the geophysic. 
Uh, the summer wasn't that great because of, uh, you know, uh, the markets crumbles yeah, since March. But uh, we sent a crew there. Uh, we had some, uh, some guys working on the ground. We did some trenches. We grabbed some samples, uh, some, uh, some channeling too. And um, we expect to have some results. Uh, if the labs were faster, I would tell you soon. But uh, I don't know uh, the, the lab delays. Uh, and it's pretty interesting. The project by itself has, uh, has already values on it. Uh, we, we know from the past uh, the showings. Uh, that were there, uh, they're still there. So we, we have to go back. But instead of you know going back to everything that was known in the past, we decided to uh, really follow the geophysic to understand all the the formation, how, how it was put in place. And then we'll go, as we go, we'll go closer to the zones that are well known. What we want is to try to understand, but two at the same time, maybe do a, a, a new discovery. Yeah, I'm talking about my sector because I know it pretty well, but there's another sector that I, I kind of cherish too, it's uh, the Shibugamu region. Uh, one of the reasons I worked with uh, Campbell Resource way back when I was doing investor relation, Campbell Resource had a great project called Copper Ran. It's under the, uh, it's under the flag of uh, Sea Bay, which is a division of uh, 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 Dory Copper, uh, they'll probably put it back in production. But you have to understand when when that project closed, uh, Copper was in the ditch uh, in the early 2000s. So it was a problem. Uh, and then uh, it was put aside and uh, Dory Copper was, uh, were pretty su successful to acquire the project and they will probably put it in production. Yeah, because there's, there's not that many copper mines left in the world. I think we're at an all-time low for copper mining currently. Yeah, we're, we're at all-time low right now. Uh, there's, uh, there's still copper mining in, uh, in Chile, uh, but they still have their problems because uh, they're, they're trying to nationalize the mines or uh, increase the uh, royalties. So it's starting to be a problem. Peru, too, uh, there's uh, copper mines, but there's political issues right now. Uh, Argentina, like McEwen is going, is pretty good. Mongolia is pretty good, but Mongolia is still you know, kind of close to Russia right now. So uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, but anyway, there's uh, there's certain areas there's are still copper. But to my point of view, the Quebec file is probably one of the best. Yeah. Um, if we look at the uh, government in place right now. Their strategy for resources is to be able to be self-sufficient on our resource. Uh, if I look at uh, the, the way back in the early spring, they, uh, they did a deal with GM, a GM to bring their new uh, battery, battery development plant into Bekanku. If I look at uh, some of my friends, Minya uh, uh, Nouveau Monde, uh, graphite nouveau moon uh, they're uh, they're probably going in production soon and uh, they're going to be opening their mill in uh, in Bekanko. there's a namaska lithium uh, that will probably be in production too so we look at all those files and it's 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 really something interesting for the development of the province and we have to understand that the province benefits from it because uh, uh, whatever we take out of the ground, the government's getting a royalty on it. Of course. So, so it's, uh, it pays off for the government and for the rest of the population. Because it's not like you're, you know, you're not benefit, no, the, the population is, is not benefiting from, from the fact that we're mining. Uh, they're actually, it's money coming back to the government that they can re-inject somewhere else. Uh, at the same time, it's job creation. Uh, we were talking about the gas-pay copper mine. If they put it back in production in five years, uh, it's going to create anywhere between 500 and 700 jobs. While they're going to be in, co in construction, it's going to be between 15 and 1,800 jobs. Uh, that's you know, income taxes paid, uh, money coming back into, into the system. It's going to create new jobs. It's going to create new, new, uh, new avenues. Um, this is everything that we have to look at as far as 
as exploration, development, and exploitation of, of, of the natural resource. The footprint of a natural resource is not that big. It's not worse than, I would say, um, a quarry. Yeah. A quarry is a mine. So you can have a quarry and open it. We used to have quarries in the Montreal sector. We did. Uh, and quarries right now, if you look at them, they're all filled and they're actually constructing on the, the old Miron quarries in, uh, in Montreal. Uh, they're doing construction. So it's, yeah, it, it, it is, it will take some room, it will take some place, but at a certain point, it's not that much of a footprint if uh, depending on the size of the property. That mining is like, I think I, I, I saw an article a few years ago, it's about 8 billion Quebec's, Quebec's economy. Yeah. It's huge. So taking that in consideration, I mean, having all these resources here in our own jurisdiction, which is a safe jurisdiction, like you mentioned, I mean, it, it, I'm only hopeful for Quebec and where we stand. But yeah. what is a project, like a copper project, let's say, a successful project in Quebec? What does that mean for, for Quebec's economy? Um, it, it means job creation. Uh, royalties to the uh, to the government, especially if if it's a Quebec-based company with a Quebec-based uh, ownership, you know, shareholders, uh, it's benefiting to everyone. Why do they say that copper is recession-proof? If we go into a recession, and we saw it in the past, if we go into a recession, or if you go into a correction like in two thousand and eight, where uh, the commercial paper went down in 2007, and then the toxic paper in 2008. The economy in the States went belly up. Uh, and to restart the economy, and there was a recession at that point, to restart it, the government in injected a lot of money in construction. So, because there, there's, a, there's a rule in, in the States, they have to, to make sure that every citizen has a place to stay. So yeah. they have to reconstruct a lot of, you know, uh, uh, low low cost or low uh, rent uh, housing, and so that means they're gonna have to wire the place, pipe the place. So it's it's gonna be copper, and copper is associated to good things and it's associated to bad things. If I look at what's going on in the war right now, uh, every war. There was a demand in copper. Uh, every recession, there's a demand for copper. And when we talk, why do we need copper for the war? Uh, first of all, when you build tanks, they need copper to, to be able to wire it. The other thing, too, is the, the uh, alloy to make the, uh, the ammunition is copper. So they need it at a certain point. That's sad to say. But uh, so every, whatever period, recession, war, uh, electrification for not our future, this is where that material is always, you know, in demand. Um, if I look at price of gold, yeah, price of gold is is what people follow. When in reality, it should be the price of copper because copper is saying to everybody, this is. The economy. This is where the economy is going right now. And like you mentioned, I think we could close on that. If copper doubles in price, well, I mean, like Sylvain said, you need copper in the economy. It's good for the economy. Best thing in the world. If you guys like this content, you want to learn about precious metals, follow our channels and come to our platform, Inversio.com. We'll see you later.